Welcome back to the Teapot Reads. My name is Sam. This is what I'm currently reading and this is the beginning of another vlog. I haven't vlogged in about a week. I, I have two vlogs that I'm currently editing and are in the works and I really want to post but I just haven't had time to sit down and really work on them to, um, to get them where I want them to be. And I was like, okay, well, these aren't going up right now and I just need a break from vlogging. So I took that break and I feel really good. I feel really refreshed. It is December 14th today. Um, wow. <laughs> the month is like halfway over. This, um, this December is not my favorite month. I think November and February are my favorite months, but I, I do love December. I love Christmas time, even though I get really I get really sad <laughs> around any major holidays they're very difficult for me and that's not fun but I do I, I love Christmas I love the Christmas aesthetic I love Christmas time so this vlog is probably going to carry us through Christmas I'm thinking it's probably just going to cover um, probably the rest of the month just end the year on this vlog uh, so since it's going to be kind of a longer one, I wanted to just talk about, first of all, the books that I'm currently reading right now, so that you get a sense of where I'm at. I am mainly reading Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. This is actually a reread. I am, <laughs> I was supposed to be buddy reading it with a friend, but then I got really far behind because of mental health and <laughs> so she finished it. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm going to obviously keep reading this and I was going to buffer this book and book three with the Starless Sea in between. I'm probably just going to dive right into book three when I finish this. Uh, obviously we'll find out if that is the case, but that's my plan right now. I'm loving it. Rereading these books are so great. I, I love this trilogy to death. It's one of my favorite things in the world. I'm also reading um, book or volume eight in the Sweat and Soap series, which is a manga that I love. It's been great to return to this. The It's set in like a warmer uh, month <laughs> than we are right now. So it's a little, having a little dissonance there, but I, it's a lot of fun. This is a great manga series. I haven't read, um, I haven't read these since the summer, I don't think. So it's been a while and I have quite a few volumes that have piled up. And then I've been listening to the audiobook. I've been listening to a couple audiobooks, but this is the one I've been giving the most attention to. This is Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. If you've been on this channel uh, in the past, if you followed me, you know I've actually started this a while ago. And I kept just listening to a couple chapters here and there. It's really hitting its stride. It's really good. I love Elizabeth Gaskell. Her writing is so funny. She is just very quick. She's very good at writing gossip and writing very normal people and normal concerns and this is just amazing this is sadly her final book and she passed away before it was finished because it was serialized so i won't get a proper ending but i am really enjoying it it is about molly gibson her father remarried and her new stepmother has a daughter and her new stepmother is kind of awful <laughs> it's a little bit of like a cinderella type story I, I'm really enjoying it. All the characters are great. I love Cynthia. I think Cynthia might be my favorite character. Even though I don't trust her or necessarily like her all the time, I think she's my favorite. And when I finish this, I fully plan to pick up another Gaskell audiobook, I think, because I just, I'm loving this so much. And finally, and this is probably, um, of the three, like, new reads, which is Sweat and Soap Volume 8, Wives and Daughters, and this, this is my favorite favorite of the new reads. This is Landmarks by Robert McFarlane. This is a piece of nature writing. I very rarely read nonfiction. You know that. I am in love with this book. This book is everything. It is everything. It is just beautiful. It is a series of essays about language and about the words we use for nature and about nature words like there are little appendices at the end of each chapter that have different nature words and I just I am in love the writing is beautiful each chapter is amazing I have cried multiple times while reading this book I uh, my words my words cannot encompass this book it's so amazing I I am I'm gonna tell you right now I strongly recommend every person go read this because 
it, it's not necessarily changing the way I think, but I think it's making me a better person. Uh, just having read this book, it's, it's phenomenal. I know I'm going to cry multiple more times while, while just, just reading it. Um, oh, this is not actually my first Robert McFarlane. I read The Lost Words very, or The Lost Spells or something like that. I read one of the poetry books that he wrote and I loved that. And I didn't even put it together that it was the same author until I started looking up more about him and like looking at more of his books. You probably know him from his book, um, Underland. I had a look. I do own it. <laughs> I own it now. Underland. It's about trees and roots and things. And um, I will be reading that. I picked it up. I picked up that. I picked up. I had another of his on the shelf that had sounded interesting that I picked up before Landmarks, which was um, ho uh, Holloways or Ghostways, something like that. And then I also picked up The Old Ways, which is came out right before this and is actually advertised on the back. So Robert McFarlane. Oh my goodness. This book is so important. That's what I'm currently reading. I just wanted to uh, share that with you, show you what I'm up to. Whew, what are plans? Uh, right now, working, 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 working. I am really stressed because work is really stressful right now. I, I don't know. I think that's probably the big reason. I also haven't been feeling well. It's not, it's not COVID. It's my glasses prescription is old and I need new glasses. So that's one of the reasons I'm not feeling well. And I've been also having, um, like, uh, so I'm lactose intolerant and I've been having just a lot of issues related to that lately. So <laughs> health wise, like I am fine. I just don't always feel fine. Um, Tank can jump on my bed now, which means he can jump off, which is more concerning because I think that's going to hurt him because he has bad elbows. So I'm, I'm, I had to yell at him today. I felt bad about that. But otherwise, I'm going to actually go film a video that will definitely post before this posts, uh, which is me talking about my uh, favorite classics. I ranked all the classics I read this year and I want to talk about them. I want to ramble about them for a bit. So that is actually what I'm going to go film. So just kind of, kind of status quo right now. Um, which is good. I think I need that, but hopefully I'll be able to do some Christmassy and holiday things. Oh, I just love this time of year. I love the season. I love being able to keep my window open. I love the snow it hasn't really snowed properly yet hopefully it'll snow properly soon i love christmas lights um i just i really love it <laughs> so here's to here's to having a good rest of december productive day so far. It's like 1.30. I 
recorded a video. I did some reading. I had two full meals. I did some writing. I feel good. I feel good. I'm making cocoa right now. Figured out the cocoa powder I have is technically stale, but we're gonna we're gonna deal with it. Cause I don't have any more cocoa powder. <laughs> um, so we're just dealing with it. I'm going to wrap gifts after this. And I'll definitely try to get some B-roll of that because I'm really excited. I have a lot of gifts to wrap. There's so many. Um, but first I'm going to enjoy my cup of cocoa. I'm gonna do some reading and my dog has been joining me on the couch, which has been magnificent. I'm gonna do a bit of cleaning. Um, my mom asked me to do some cleaning. I feel good. This is the first really good, like I feel good and I feel productive. It's the first day like this in a while. Um, like I've had really good productive days and I've had really good like feeling days, but this is the first to hit both. And I still have a lot of time left in the day. So yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm kinda, kinda living in it. It's great. I also have three days off this week, which is fantastic. <sighs> I'm, ha I'm happy. I'm in a good place right now. chipped my tooth no it's a hole in my tooth um will I be okay yes am I freaking out yes <laughs>
you again with more info about my tooth and about reading. So the book, the book is happy. I am almost done with my reread of Royal Assassin. I'm really, really close. I'm really, really enjoying it. I wish I just had the rest of the day just to read because I the ending of this book is one of the most intense endings of any book I've ever read and I love it. I actually reread the ending quite frequently just to bring back those emotions because it's just so much and it's so good. I I I just want to I just want to sit down and read it. And maybe tonight, maybe after dinner, I will be able to do that. Hopefully cuz I just really want to do that. Um Speaking of today, I do want to do a couple other things. I finished wrapping, as you saw. I would really like to put together this gingerbread house that I bought for my dog. It's like a dog-friendly gingerbread house, and I really want to put that together. Um, and I want to try to edit to completion three videos till I get ahead. It's like a little treat for myself. Um, so we'll see. That's like my goal. As for my tooth, so my dentist can't see me until January 12th. If it hurts, I'm going to contact them, see if I can change that. Right now it's not hurting, it just kind of aches a little bit and I'm well aware that it's broken because it like rubs up against my tongue. And it's just very freaky um, and upsetting on like a <laughs> emotional level. I'm very upset about my tooth. I don't know if you can see it. Ah, You can kind of see it. Um, but I'm okay. I am okay, I just am annoyed and upset by it, but I'm not hurting and I'm not like unable to eat because the side's okay. So I wanted to update you there because I realized I didn't really elaborate. I was just like, oh, I broke my tooth, which it sucks. It's It's been miserable. I finally, I my God, I, I finally can appreciate the song all I want for Christmas are my two front teeth, um, except not my two front teeth. I just want my back molar. Um, that's all I want for Christmas. Please, <laughs> please, Santa, bring me my tooth back. Christmas Eve. Um, it is uh, six o'clock in the morning. I have to be at work in an hour, but there's not that much traffic this early, so I'm not. I, I was like, okay, I can probably push um, when I leave a little a little later than normal. Um, I get off at three thirty, which is awesome, which is really exciting, and then I come home. Um, and my mom's like, you get out of like cleaning and helping. And I was like, well, I'm working. So I don't know what you call it, get out. Um, and then I think we're having pizza for dinner. And um, then, well, we had plans. Typically we go visit my mom's side on Christmas Eve. And my dad's side comes to visit on Christmas day. That's not happening tonight. Part of my mom's family is coming our house because some of the um or one of um like my aunt and some of my cousins tested positive for covid they're okay they're all vaccinated um so the rest of people are coming over so i don't know how much recording i want to try to get a little bit but we'll see and then um tomorrow i think we're just doing it with my family for covid safety reasons so we'll uh like my immediate family so I'll get I'll get some B-roll footage. I probably won't talk a lot in the vlog. I'm just gonna try to enjoy the holiday.
after Christmas. I want to talk about reading goals, I think. Um, immediate goal wise, I am nearly done with Royal Assassin. I think I'm going to finish it tonight while I talk to you. Actually, uh, if you don't mind, I have some stickers to take off of books. Reading goals. I. I think you're going to see a slowdown in YouTube content. Not because I have less ideas, but because I wanna spend more of my free time reading. I feel like I have centered a lot of this year, especially a lot of the latter half of the year, or since spring even. I feel like I've spent a lot of that time telling myself, I wanna be home reading, or I just wanna be reading, and then using my free time to work on other projects such as YouTube, which I don't mind because I love doing YouTube. I love filming, I love editing, I I love the content creation process. I think it's a lot of fun and I, I have a lot of fun doing it. I know I'm not always the most active and quick to like respond to comments, but I do really enjoy reading comments. They I'll go back and reread them several times because they just bring me so much pleasure. Um, like that just interaction does. But I feel like I am pushing myself a little too hard on YouTube. I, I think you're going to really see just weekly postings like once a week and not uh, several times a week, which is kind of the habit I had started to get into. I also think that the quality of stuff I was putting out because it was so much, um, like I could make better quality videos. Um, like I could take more time to edit and also learn how to film and edit because I'm still learning that kind of stuff. I'm still practicing. I'm still, you know, practicing and, and, and trying new techniques. So I want to also be able to do that. And I think I'll be able to do that more if I just post weekly. Not to say I won't have weeks where I do post more than one thing. I do think that's going to happen because when I, I, I plan my posting schedule, I don't plan vlogs. Like I plan, like I'll write down, okay, this is a book coming out this month. I'd like to try to do a vlog for this. Or it's winter time. I should try to do a Christmas Eve vlog. Um, but I don't like set a date that I, I want it done by. I used to do that and they just felt a lot less organic and were a lot less interesting to edit. So I don't do that anymore. But I, I do think you're going to see a lot fewer videos uh, in the coming months, weeks. Because I really want to spend a lot of my free time reading and reconnecting with my love for books. Obviously, I still love books. Obviously, that never stopped. But I just stopped giving myself time to enjoy the books. I mean, I have been reading Royal Assassin for uh, about a month not that long but a while and it's a long book but it's not a hard book and I love this book and I remember the first time I read it I raced through it and I had a job I wasn't working full-time but I was working as close to full-time as I could get so like maybe a five-hour difference like I should still be able to read what I've become accustomed to reading and just, you know, I'm, I'm a little frustrated with myself that it's become so difficult. Um, so I, I want to, I want to spend a lot more time reading moving forward, uh, is really the, the long and short of that part of my goal. Um, I also kind of set a sort of goal for myself of a hundred pages a day. I don't think that's going to happen every day. Today I have a terrible headache. I was up early. I kind of feel like I look tired even in the video. So I don't think like a hundred pages is going to happen today. But I am planning after this to go, um, I'm going to put away these new books. Put them on stickering. I just filmed a TikTok. I don't know, maybe I'll edit it tonight. I don't know. TikToks don't take me that long to edit. Um, but I will... I'm just gonna read. I'm gonna go take a bath. I'm going to read. I'm going to get out of the bath. Maybe have some dessert. Maybe. And then I'm going to read. Um, 
and I'm gonna go to bed when I'm tired. That's my goal for the night. I haven't had such simple goals in a while. Like I haven't had such simple goals that it'll feel like fulfilling to have done that in a while. So I am, I'm really excited. Other reading goals. I think I've mentioned in my wrap ups. No, I know I've mentioned in my wrap ups. I don't know if I got like super specific in it, but I really want to read more diversely. It's something that I have, I was succeeding quite nicely at the beginning of the year, but have really fallen off uh, in the last, like last four or five months. And I'm a bit disappointed in myself because I had been doing so well. So I kind of have a plan. As you might know, I've gotten rid of my TBRs. That's not changing. I'm not really sticking to a TBR. I have kind of a loose TBR right now um, in that I want to read or obviously finish Royal Assassin and I'm going to reread Starless Sea because I like to read it this time of year. It's just sort of a mini tradition that started and I don't want to give that up because I have so much fun with that book. It's one of my favorite books of all time. And um, because of that, I, I, I have like that kind of mini TBR. So after Royal Assassin, I'm going... And uh, Starless Sea, I'm going to reread Assassin's Quest because I was reread, I was reading these, buddy reading these with a friend, and I'm very far behind. But um, she understands. <laughs> I am kind of planning to fill the year with Realm of the Elderling books, so the way I'm thinking of doing it is every other. So okay, most of them are trilogies, so. It will be like book one, other book, book two, other book, book three, three books, book one, you know, so break up the trilogies and the series by three books in between, but just break up the individual books by one book in between. Obviously, if I'm really into the story that's being told, I can dive right into the next one. But that's what I'm thinking, just to kind of break it up and so that I'm literally not just reading Realm of the Elderling books this year. That doesn't seem like a bad idea, but I just have so many books I want to read this year. Or this coming year. I guess this will post in 2022, so this year. For those watching. I, uh... I'm thinking... When I'm not reading... So, when I finish Realm of the Elderlings, or if I give up on this little, like, Realm of the Elderlings project, I'm going to do every third read is a purposeful, diverse read. That's not to say I won't read diversely outside of those, but I'm thinking that way if I'm like actively and purposefully going, okay, I want to read something diverse, I'll at least get a third of my reading this year as diverse. And I think that'll be good, right? I think it'll be great for myself. And it just is something I should be doing. And um, I have a lot, I've gotten more books now than I think I did at the beginning of 2021 I think I have more diverse books now which is good I am also thinking that during the realm of the elderlings reread and read I guess the only ones I'm rereading are the Farseer trilogy I'm going to be doing basically every other non-elderling book is gonna be diverse on purpose so it'll look like this elderling book one other read. Elderling book two, diverse read. Elderling book three, other read, diverse read, other read, elderling book one, diverse read. Like a poem. A, B, C, or I'm sorry, A, B, A, C, A, B, C, B, A. <laughs> Please tell me someone followed that. Um, <laughs> So that's just what I'm thinking for reading goals and like reading pattern that I'm going to try to set for myself. Ooh, that was the first sticker to come off that nicely. I don't know, I just wanted to share that, I guess. I guess not goals, but I feel like next year I am going to read a lot of classics just cause that's what I'm interested in reading right now. I think I started this year thinking that as well and I did read more classics than I typically do but I think next year is gonna be the year where I really, really dedicate a lot of time to classics. 
I also have kind of unconsciously been collecting French literature. So I think French literature and I are going to have quite the year. I am actually planning a lot of Japanese literature next year. I'm really excited. Kind of like a purpose, like I've been, I'm unintentionally getting a lot of French literature. Like I've recently picked up Les Mis and Hunchback of Notre Dame. And uh, I'm more excited for Hunchback. I, I, I ordered Les Mis and then I walked into work one day and there's this edition of Hunchback of Notre Dame. that I was like, okay, wait, hold on. So I think you can expect to see a lot of Japanese and French literature. A lot of, I'm in a magical realism kick. Um, so I think you're gonna see a lot of that, at least in the next couple months. And hopefully a lot more fantasy. I feel like I didn't read a lot of fantasy this year. But that's like my bread and butter. So I should get on that. Anyway, I am gonna go try to finish taking these sticker offs. And then I'm going to go take a bath and enjoy my night. House of Anubis, one of the most influential shows of my childhood, and I'm so excited. This is the OG dark academia thing. I got me even interested in it. I made me like fall in love with it before anyone was like falling in love with it. Anyway, about to watch House of Anubis. I am super excited. I really hope it holds up at least a little bit. I'm gonna be is bright it's not even like shining directly on me um i i am going to sit down and read some more of landmarks today by robert mcfarland it's been several days since i've had the opportunity to read this book because i have been just very stressed out um i haven't wanted to split my attention between books because of the stress but i have missed reading this book because it is absolutely beautiful so I am actually going to go sit down and uh, read a chapter of that I think because I don't think I know because I just I need to return to it it's been a couple maybe not a couple weeks it's been at least a week um, that I am loving this book absolutely loving this book but I did actually the other day because it's it's Wednesday my dudes and I actually did finish Royal Assassin and I was it every intent, every every plan to read this or reread the Starless Sea next. But oh my god, Royal Assassin, the ending of Royal Assassin is just one of my favorite just like cliffhangers. So I was like I think I'm skipping my Starless Sea reread this year because I dove right into Assassin's Quest. I could not stop myself. The the just the 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 angst between the ending of book two and the start of book three is so much my heart always gets like really like pain <laughs> um but i'm really really happy to be diving directly in to assassin's quest and oof, i've i've several times already been like fitz you fucking idiot i forgot how painful in like a secondhand embarrassment way the beginning of this book is I, I mean, Fitz is a pretty painful character to read about for non-secondhand embarrassment reasons, but the beginning of book three, and you're just like, 
what a brat like you're such a brat but I get it but he's still a brat like a very very disappointing or disappointed in him at the beginning but my plan for the night read some more of the landmarks then take a shower and maybe do some skincare I haven't really taken care of my skin a lot this this year um I used to be really good at it but I think my mental health has largely impacted that this just made it very difficult for me to want to care about skin like there's so much else to worry about and care about but I am going to try to do some skincare tonight and it'll be good I think that'll be really nice and then I am actually probably going to continue editing. I have done a lot of YouTube work today and I'm probably going to do a lot more tomorrow. Um, I took several days of not really editing or filming or planning anything and I have a lot to film and edit and plan. So my goal, let's see, it's like 8 o'clock I think. My goal is to finish editing um, a vlog that I did a while ago now and um, I'm probably not going to post it today I'll probably schedule it to post on Friday because I have a post going up tomorrow and I don't really want them to directly compete on the same day so I'll just post tomorrow's tomorrow which is my ranking all my five star reads from this year which was really cool to go back and actually revisit it was it was one of those videos where at the time of filming it I wasn't thinking it was anything special but while editing it I was like I'm really happy with how this turned out so I'm really really happy about that um but yes if I can finish editing the other vlog and get that ready and then maybe plan the videos I was going to film tomorrow one of them doesn't need much planning the other one does so anyway that's the plan for tonight um I think I'm going to record myself reading landmarks for a bit, so please do join me for that. Um, oh, I might also edit some TikToks. Okay, hello, uh, it's Wednesday. I feel like I always update on Wednesdays. Happy Wednesday. I have work, I have to leave in about 20 minutes. Um, I just wanted to update on Assassin's Quest. So I, I've talked about, I love the Farseer trilogy. I love it so much. It's my favorite epic fantasy trilogy of all time. I absolutely adore it. Hold on, the dog doesn't understand that I'm talking to the camera. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, Tinky. Come on. Come on. 
I love it. I forgot how long Assassin's Quest is. I feel like the first time I read it, well, I'm, I, I wasn't working at the time, I don't think, or if I was, I was working part-time, because I remember just kind of laying on the couch all day and reading, and I love, like, it's such a good book. It, I love it to death, and I'm getting to some of my favorite parts. Like, I'm at the point where both Starling and Kettle have both int been introduced, and um, he's on his, like, second of the three major journeys, so he's trying to get to the mountains, and... I love it. I am really enjoying it, but it is so long and it is, it's feeling like a slog. I feel like I've been reading this book forever, like Anna Karenina levels of forever, and that's kind of driving me crazy. So I, last night I caved and I picked up the audiobook. I'm really going to try to just like race through this in as much free time as I have because I don't know, I feel bad because I do love this book, but I just need to kind of move on. I should have put a buffer book between books two and three. I will not be making this mistake moving forward with my elder, Realm of the Elderlings readings. I, there will be a buffer between each because it's just too long for me to spend in one world when I'm not reading very quickly. If I was reading quicker, I, it wouldn't be a problem. But there are so many books right now I want to read. Like, you're gonna see a book haul um, probably before this gets up maybe right after, yeah, like my Christmas book haul, there are just so many good books that I got uh, for Christmas, either because someone gifted it to me or I bought it as a Christmas treat for myself. And there's so many I wanna read. And I, this book is just taking so much time that I'm worried I'm not going to get to them. And I really want to. Um, but I was thinking ahead a little bit. I was like, oh, what am I gonna read next? And I was like, no, by the time I finish Assassin's Quest to Paradise will be out. And I really, I, that'll probably be my next read. I am super anticipating that. That's Hanya Yanagihara's new book. So that's probably what's going to happen. Um, so again, like I, I, I won't be kind of choosing a new uh, like, book to read for probably until the end of the month and so I just I, I, I downloaded the audiobook I will be listening to it on car rides in my free time it's going to be my main priority of listening to it because I just want to get it done and get it behind me so that I can move on to new books um, and I think based on the fact that this year is starting with this reread and the reread as fun as it is is not really kindling in me this desire to reread a lot of other things i have a feeling this will not be a big year for rereads something tells me it's not really gonna happen this year but that's okay that's okay update time um i think the last time we talked i told you that i was downloading Assassin's Quest on audiobook and an attempt to kind of get me moving quicker through the book just so I would feel a little more accomplished with it and a little more interested in it and it worked. I'm flying through the book now. I feel like I have found a second wind, a second reason to love it. I'm really really happy about that because not only have I been moving through it again and feeling like an accomplished reader, but I've also been able to read the book physically and still find just as much enjoyment in it. So the audiobook hasn't taken anything away from it. I'm really pleased. And the narrator is pretty good, actually very similar to how I already imagined Fitz's voice. So I'm really happy about that as well. I think I will still finish it about when I wanted to finish it, possibly a day early though. So I was thinking, cause I don't wanna pick up uh, like anything intense in between uh, this read and my next read, which is going to be To Paradise by Hani Yanagihara. So I am actually going to pick up a graphic novel I have called Oxy, and I will talk more about that when I start it, because that is where I will leave you on the vlog, because I, I already know I want to do a vlog specifically for To Paradise, so that'll be the cutoff when that book comes out. Yeah, I just want to update with that reading. It's going really well. I'm on chapter 33 now. So this this is the part of the book where like I, I'm, I'll be so emotional by the end. Not necessarily like physically emotional, but like mentally in turmoil. <laughs> um, other updates, Tank 
was neutered yesterday, Friday. We put it off for so long because the vets had recommended putting it off for a while. I guess now they want them to get it later, before they're one, but still later in their life than they used to do because I know my old dog had gotten it like very early. I don't even remember a time before he was neutered. So, and we also had to keep pushing it off because of Tink's other surgery. We didn't want to put him through that much trauma at once. So he is recovering. Yesterday he was really out of it. He's still kind of out of it today. Um, he pretty much just needs someone with him all day. He is recovering fine, but I feel like he is a bit more distressed this time around than with the other surgery. The other surgery we... Well, I think the other surgery... Well, I guess... He did have a... Um, a fentanyl patch for painkillers after his last one and this one he doesn't so he probably is feeling this one a bit more than his last one and I think also the fact that he pretty much just finished recovering from his last surgery doesn't help but he is okay he's sleeping now um recovery period they said was 10 days so this is day this is day like one of recovery so he's got a bit more to go and I feel very very bad for him he's poor little pup other other updates uh, my eye has started to hurt again so that's fun emotionally I had a stretch of two really good like perfect days and I think a large part of it is because I started waking up earlier again. I used to wake up at 7.30 and I switched it for the winter months to eight because I was like, okay, I'm gonna treat myself. I don't have as much going on in the winter. I can't really go outside and do anything. So um, let's wake up at eight. And that was fine, but I was finding myself a little more sluggish, even though I was going to bed a little later to kind of make up for that half hour difference. So. Uh, at the beginning of this year, I, not like on the first day, but or a couple days ago, I was like, well, why don't I start waking up at 7 again? Or at 7 instead of 7.30, so earlier again. And it has done wonders for me. It gives me <clears throat> more time to wake up. So my alarm goes off at 7, and then I hit uh, a timer alarm for half an hour and give myself that period to sort of drift awake. And it allows me to sort of wake up more naturally because I pretty much always drift awake before that half hour timer is up. Normally it takes me about 10 to 12 minutes to regain myself. And then I have a little extra time to do the things I like to do in the morning, as well as get a little reading done in the morning. And I've also challenged myself this year to listen to one album every day in its entirety. This doesn't have to be new or new to me albums. It just has to be a full album, but I have so far done, I think all new albums where I've never listened to the entirety of the mountain before, the mountain of the album before the, um, and the first one on here was pictures of mountains. Um, so it gives me time to do that and wake up and it has been very nice. And I think that really kickstarted two really, really good days. Um, and then I had a really, really bad day on Friday. It had nothing to do with Tank or his surgery. Um, even uh, Thursday night just wasn't great. Um, oh, because my brother tested positive for COVID. So that's fun. He's fine, but that's just a stressor. Isn't that fun? And... So that kind of kickstarted just like a not very good day. And today has been, thankfully it's my day off, but today has kind of just been recovery from that. So that's been interesting. That's it for updates, I think. I just wanted, I really just wanted to come on here and tell you that the audiobook has been doing wonders for me. And I'm really, really happy I did that. I don't think I will be doing it for To Paradise because I want to annotate that. I have three different copies that are coming. I ordered a signed copy from barnesandnoble.com 
I ordered a copy through work. It's just the regular edition. And I also ordered the Goldsboro edition. And so I do have those three copies and I won't obviously mar up the signed edition or the Goldsboro edition, but I think it would be really fun to annotate the, um, the edition I read. But I'm going to do like light. It's not going to be crazy annotating. It's going to be pretty much just uh, highlighting. Similar to how I did Anna Karenina, but a lot less intense because I'm not interested in highlighting everything in the book. I just want to really capture direct reactions, I think. But I'll, I'll talk about that more in my To Paradise video, so you can expect me to launch into that. Um, and I don't know how I got on that topic, but I think that's it for updates. So. I'm going to uh, go back. I was listening to the audiobook some more as I got some chores done. I was filling up. I have like, it's not really a bullet journal because people have nice bullet journals, but this is my little bullet journal. It just has my schedule that I kind of block off and then goals I want to accomplish. And then in the column here is where I'll leave notes or uh, activities for the day and etc. like that. Um, so I get my schedule on Saturday. So I was just gonna add my schedule for the week. Not this coming week, but like it's two weeks away. And then I have D&D &D tonight, which is exciting. I'm looking forward to that. And I think this is the first time our entire party has been able to get together um, in about a month. Uh, so I'm happy that's working out. I hope I didn't just jinx it. Yes, and oh, okay, so another small decision I think I've come to. I was going to do three books in between Realm of the Elderlings series, um, but I think I'm going to do five books. It's still gonna follow that pattern of diverse read or intentionally diverse read and then anything and then intentionally diverse read and then anything and then intentionally diverse read and then anything like etc. But I really want to put five books in between because there are just so many books I want to read this year. There are just, oh my god, so very many. I, I'm, I, I'm a little overwhelmed by just how many good books and exciting books I have on my shelves because I haven't felt this purely excited in a while, I feel like. I don't know if something just clicks in my head, but I'm very excited. So. Anyway, I'll see you in a little bit. Good morning. Uh, welcome to the final day. Welcome to the final day of the reading vlog. I just finished um, Assassin's Quest. Oh, let me <laughs> grip the camera. Uh, I just finished it. It's done. It's done. It's over. I am just as happy with this ending as it was the first time. I think I found the book a little slower this time around, but the ending was just as satisfying, if not more so. I, I did leave a little bit. It's fine. It's great. I'm really, really happy to have read it. And I'm actually, because To Paradise comes out tomorrow, I'm going to read, oh, I'm going to read a graphic novel called Oxy, but I'm going to get ready to get dressed for the day and then I'll show you the graphic novel because it's cute. It's about a bear. It looks like it'll be a quick read. Um, I think it's won awards, so it's probably going to be a good read as well. Alright, um, Oxy. I had to actually bring out a, a larger sized book sleeve for this. This is uh, from Fairy Loot. It is, I, don't, I think it's probably their most recent book sleeve. It's um, the characters from These Violent Delights, I think. I still haven't read that book, but I think it's the only sleeve Oxy would fit in. It doesn't really fit with what Oxy's about, but hold on. 
right. It might have fit, but it was a poor fit. <laughs> Getting it out was a little harder than I thought, but it'll travel safely. So this is Oxy uh, by Mari Ahakoivu. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. I did try to look it up, but there wasn't there wasn't any info. This this is about a bear. It's a Finnish folk tale, I think. Um, the little flap descriptor. Oop. Kind of an awkward angle. The descriptor says, Porling is a little bear. She's a bit different from her brothers. Mother keeps their family safe, for the forest is full of dangers. It is there that Mana lives with her shadow children. And above them all, Amu, the great grandma in the sky. From the heart of Finnish folklore comes a breathtaking tale of mothers, daughters, stars, and legends, and the old gods and the new. And let me just uh, flip camera and show you some of the art, because I can't hold it up and show you, but it looks adorable. It's giving me Ghibli meets Moomin vibes, I guess. So, I, I've only flipped through it a little myself, because I don't want to spoil myself, but there's color, there's a lot of black and whites. I, I just, I'm, I'm very excited. Like, yeah. Sorry, I spooked Tank a bit with that slap. I'm sorry, baby. Good boy, good boy. Yeah, good boy. He's drowsy. Um, I think this is, why well, I know this is gonna be a quick read. I will probably read the entirety of it today because tomorrow to paradise comes out. Like I said, very exciting. I did also, cause I had been listening to the audiobook of Assassin's Quest and I was really enjoying listening to an audiobook on my ride to and from work. So I actually downloaded an audiobook of a book that is very far down my TBR. I was like, I don't know when I'm ever gonna pick this up physically, but I have it, let's give it a try. And that is Beasts of Prey. I think this came in a book box. I probably wouldn't have picked this up on my own. It doesn't super appeal to me, but I am giving the audiobook a try. If I like it, obviously I'll keep it, but if I don't like it after after about 25%, I'll probably just DNF it, because like I said, it wasn't a book I picked up for myself. It sounds interesting. The concept of like this night zoo with dangerous creatures sounds interesting, but there there wasn't really a pole on the back that made me go, oh, this book sounds good. It was just kind of like, yeah, this sounds fine. <laughs> it sounds interesting. I hope to prove myself wrong, but we'll see. Can listen to that for a bit. You do have the audio on like 1.8 times, so <laughs> I might have to slow it down a bit. I could do it with Assassin's Quest because I'm so familiar with it, but we'll see. So that's probably what I'll listen to on the way to work, which I do have to leave just about now. And then at work and at home tonight, I'll read Oxy. Oxy? Oxy? Um, and yeah, with the end of this book will be the end of the vlog. This was a long one. It was going to be, I wanted it to be more Christmassy. I don't think it was super Christmassy because I let myself relax and not really record anything Christmas time. So <laughs> there's that. This was a good vlog, I think. Felt very more freeform than I normally do. So I liked that. Anyway, it's not over yet, so I'll say goodbye in a wee bit. I just finished Oxy. Oxy. I just, I finished it. Um, it was good. I don't think delightful is the right term. It was very moving and emotional and this was a book I just kind of picked up on a complete whim I was like I want to buy a graphic novel today and I saw this and I was like I'll buy this graphic novel and what the fuck that was so dark and kind of nightmare inducing I loved it it was really good it was really good it is very sad. I actually teared up several times while reading it. There were several times where I like had to like look away from it and be like, what just happened? Like, oh my god, did that really just happen? Like, it doesn't pull punches. And it has a really, really interesting like moral, I guess, uh, that I loved. I thought it was great. I was like, this is so, it was, it's the most amoral moral to, to a story I've read. And I really liked it. And I kind of want to do a little bit more research into 
uh, like Finnish mythology because weird, 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 really good. Definitely um, different from a lot of folklore and fairy tales I'm familiar with, but I loved it. This is like going to be, I think, I think I will give this five stars. I think that seems like a safe bet. What was it about? Because the description it gave really wasn't the right description. Uh, it's about Porling, who is this little not bear, not fire thing. And she is raised with some bear cubs under the mother bear, Umi. And the other cubs make it very clear that Porling is not like them. And so she retaliates and scares them and sort of reminds Umi, the mother bear, that Porling is not a bear cub. And Umi, who is the daughter of the like, sky goddess, Emu, freaks out and is trying to take cubs away from Porling, but Porling just sees her mother leaving and so chases. And that's kind of the first third of the story. And I think that's a good setup because after that it's the basically progression of events as things sort of keep tumbling out of Porling's control even as she's trying to just get to her mother. Um, and it's really, I think the, the, the relationship between mothers and daughters in this is very interesting as well as just female characters in general. I don't know the gender of Scalp. I don't think they ever say. Umi, Emu, Porling, and Mana, who is sort of this dark god, they're all women. And I thought that was very interesting. And the relationship between Mana and Emu is that Emu kicked out Mana. I don't know if they were directly related, but there is a little almost sort of parental child relationship in that exiling. I feel like it just came that way for me. But then obviously Emu is Umi's mother and Umi is Porling's mother. And that dynamic I thought was very interesting. And the, the story does point out this several times that this is the dynamic between them all. So anyway, I just, I thought that was really interesting. I loved the way that song and music and noise was depicted in this graphic novel. I don't, you know, let me, let me flip the camera and try to show you what I mean, because I don't know if I have the words to explain it. So we have some scenes like this. Uh, these are like songs and they're a bit more. Uh, they're wordier than other bits. Like there's a couple songs um, like this one. And I think these are all Scalp singing it as well. Um, but then we have song or noises. So let's start with the first noise. Um, this. Like I can... I feel like I can hear that, you know, like the way that sounds. Um, let's see, let's find another one. I don't want to pick a spoiler. Um. Got a little bit of noise there. That's a song again. Um, here we go. That's the oopsie. That's the start of a song. You know, I feel like I can hear this sort of just by looking at it on paper. And there are some very clever songs, like just the way it's depicted. I feel like most of them are probably too spoilery. Um, 
well, you got a good peek of the art, I guess. Um, but I just loved how it was depicted. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I, yeah, this is five stars. This is good. I'm really glad, I'm really glad I took the, the time between Assassin's Quest and to Paradise to read this because this was incredibly refreshing and just delightful and very much out of the realm of what I was thinking I would be reading this month. So I very delightful. It's also a good wintery read, I think. Um, the bears, I love bears and just the setting, all the grays and the whites and the blacks, very wintry. The trees are a lot of times in the stark white, which you probably saw while I was flipping through. And I just, I liked that a lot. But now I do leave you because tomorrow I pick up to paradise. Tomorrow is the big day. Um, so I'm going to start the next reading vlog immediately. And I will probably take a break between that vlog and another because I just don't think I can do them back to back, um, just energy wise. But this is, uh, this is where I leave you. So first of all, good night because I'm going to go to bed now. But second of all, thank you so much for being here with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for bearing with me for taking forever to post vlogs and content. I feel like I'm behind on stuff, but thank you so much for sitting with me. Just, I, I know I keep saying thank you, but it means the world to me. So one more time. Thank you. If you are somewhere warm, I hope you're staying comfortable. If you are somewhere cold, I hope you're staying warm. And most of all, I hope you're reading a great book. I will see you guys next time. Bye.